Hi, my name is Dr. Ashrita. Today I'm going to talk about vesicular bullous disorders. So, vesicular bullous disorders, another name for it is pemphigus or pemphigoid. And pemphigus is a word that is actually derived from the Greek word known as pemphix, which basically means a blister or a bubble. So, in pemphigus or pemphigoid disorders, we usually see blisters on the skin as well as the mucous membrane. So, pemphigus, first I'm going to talk about the pemphigus disorders, then I'm going to talk about pemphigoid and other vesicular bullous disorders. In pemphigus, there are, they are basically a group of disorders which occur due to acantholysis of the epidermal cells due to circulating and autoantibodies targeted against the epidermal antigen. So, the term acantholysis means that the epidermal cells are separated from each other. And this leads to the formation of a blister, which is either intraepidermal or subepidermal. So the classic example of pemphigus group of disorders is pemphigus vulgaris. And this is also the most common condition. It is often seen in the middle-aged age group of lower socioeconomic status. In pemphigus disorders, the antigens which are targeted by autoantibodies desmoglein 1 and desmoglein 3 and desmoglein 1 and 3 are mainly function in addition of the cells, epidermal cells to each other. So when desmoglein 1 and 3 are targeted, these additions are kind of broken down, which leads to weakening of the epidermal structures and a loss of additions between cells and leading to the formation of a blister cavity. So uh, a little background about desmogleins. So in skin as well as mucosa, the predominant desmogleins are desmoglein 1 and desmoglein 3. Desmoglein 1 is mainly present in the skin and to a lesser extent desmoglein 3 while in the mucous membrane desmoglein 3 is predominantly present and desmoglein 1 is present in smaller quantities. This is important later when we look at the features of how the clinical presentation uh, presents in pemphigus group of disorders. So this is basically the little background about desmogleins and how they are located in a normal epidermis as well as in a mucous membrane. So in pemphigus, we see flaccid blisters which can occur anywhere on the body. These blisters usually arise on normal appearing skin and exposure to UV radiation may exacerbate the disease. So these flaccid blisters are often fragile and they rupture easily and there's often uh, there's clear fluid present in the blisters and also a classic hallmark of pemphigus is when we pull on the periphery of the blister there's an extension of the blister into the non-involving skin uninvolved skin and also when we rub surrounding the active lesion there's also formation of new blister a classic sign of pemphigus is called a Nikolsky sign so in which we, when we do a rubbing or a shearing pressure on a bony prominence away from the active lesion, on uninvolved skin, we see formation of new blisters. And this is the hallmark of pemphigus and this often differentiate Nikolsky sign from other disorders such as bullous pemphigoid in which the Nikolsky sign is negative. And these erosions are often painful and cause quite, uh, when the blisters do rupture, the erosions are often quite painful and they cause discomfort to the patient. They're often uh, painful too. And also mucocutaneous lesions are seen. There is involvement of oropharyngeal mucosa, nasal mucosa and genital mucosa. Instead of seeing intact blisters on the mucosa, there might be erosions on the mucosa and the patient is often unable to eat or sleep peacefully due to the discomfort that is provided. Uh, the patient in a pemphigus is also malnourished and the general demeanor is also very weak and uh, this differentiate from bullous pemphigoid which is the next differential diagnosis of pemphigus in which the patient is in a much more stable condition. So the first condition that I did speak about is pemphigus vulgaris. Now I'm going to get into other variants of pemphigus. The next variant of pemphigus is pemphigus foliaceous. So in pemphigus foliaceous, instead of seeing active blisters or flaccid blisters as in pemphigus vulgaris, we see more uh, crusted lesions. And these crusted lesions are seen in a seboric distribution, often in the face, the trunk, and also on the buttocks. So they have a seboric distribution and there's a crusting of the lesion. And in pemphigus foliaceous, the mucous membrane is not involved. The general demeanor of the patient is often quite good and the patient is stable 
and there is a variant of pemphigus foliaceus is known as endemic pemphigus foliaceus which is seen in brazil and this entity is known as fogo selvagum there is a variant of pemphigus foliaceus in brazil which is uh, termed fogo selvagum which is basically the term fogo selvagum means in portuguese wildfire so this is basically a pemphigus foliaceus which is seen in the particularly that geographical distribution the next entity i'm going to talk about is pemphigus erythematosus this is also known as senior usher syndrome in pemphigus erythematosus there is an overlap of pemphigus features as well as lupus erythematosus so the patient might have seborrheic crusted lesions which are symmetrically distributed along with discoid shaped lesions seen in lupus erythematosus with a carpet tack scale and when you, we look at it immunologically we see auto antibodies which are directed against epidermal antigen as well as ana positivity is seen in 30% of patients and lupus band test is seen in about 80% of patients the next entity is drug induced pemphigus so this is seen in sulfa hydryl group of drugs mainly penicillamine and captopril so when the sulfa hydryl groups of drugs when there is a mutation that occurs or if the patient is genetically susceptible the epidermal antigens also have a sulfa hydryl component to them due to which there is an immunoreactivity or cross reaction occurs which leads to the formation of blisters